Well, welcome to this video. As always, it's Friday the 17th of April. Now, today what I want to do is bring an absolutely fascinating paper with a lot of implications, I believe, from the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, it's always good if we can get our material directly from the medical journals because it's usually written by people that uh, know what they're talking about and it's also checked over by people that know what they're talking about. So it's a fairly good source of evidence. In fact, it's the best source of evidence we can get, really. Now, if you don't want to watch this video, that's fine. I won't be offended. I'll give you the bottom line now. The bottom line is many more people might be infected than we think. Now, this is a study in New York City, so we can only talk definitively about New York City. So what it means is there might be many more people infected in New York City than we had thought were infected. And that's also true for other places. I mean, we know that's true for my country, for example, for the United Kingdom. So many places have many more infected people than they realise they have. They might suspect they've got them, but the number of people that are tested positive are actually a minority of the total number that are infected because so many people aren't tested. So that was one point, more infected people than we thought. And the second point is many of those infected appear to have no symptoms. They are often asymptomatic, which is interesting. So some people can be infected by this virus, get really quite ill and then get better. Other people can be infected by the virus, get quite ill develop complications and die. And other people can be infected by this virus and not even know that they have it. They can be asymptomatic. It's very strange. Now, I don't pretend to be able to explain this. Of course, we know more severe disease is more likely in those with comorbidities. We know more severe disease is more likely in men. We know more severe disease is more likely in the elderly. But why some people should get quite sick and why some people should be completely asymptomatic is very strange. We have a lot to learn. But let's go on and look at this data because it is, it, uh, it is very interesting. Um, we'll try and, keep it, try and keep it fairly straightforward. Now, there's quite a lot of numbers in this paper, so it, it took me quite a while to, uh, to work it out. But I think I've got there now. So this was a study carried out in New York, which, of course, is an epicentre at the moment with a lot of disease carried out in this uh, hospital in New York, associated with the uh, Columbia University. As always, you'll be given the link so you can click on it and check for yourself. Now, just to make sure what we're talking about, this is a uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus type two, which of course is the virus which is causing the current COVID-19 pandemic. And the test they did on all the women that were admitted for delivery in this uh, maternity hospital was the uh, preliminaries chain reaction. In other words, they were testing for the presence of the virus. This is the antigen test for the presence of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the virus that causes the COVID-19 disease. So all these women were tested on admission. So they tested the whole sample. And this was carried out between the 22nd of March and the 4th of April. So it's fairly new data and it's just recently been published. And 215 pregnant women were admitted and they were all tested. Now, of the 215 that were admitted, four had symptoms of COVID-19 disease. Now, this isn't really surprising because New York is in the middle of a major outbreak. It's an epicentre. So for four people out of 215 to be symptomatic at the time is not that surprising. So four of the 215 women were having symptoms. That's 1.9% were having symptoms. But of course, that means that 211 women were not having symptoms out of the 215. So 215 admitted, four with symptoms, 211 without symptoms of COVID-19. And they managed to do the swabs, these nasopharyngeal swabs for the uh, PCR, for the antigen test, testing for the presence of the virus in 210 women. 
So that's a good sample size. So they tested 210 women. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. So 210 women were tested who didn't have symptoms. But 28 of those women were positive. In other words, that's nearly 14% had the virus, but were not presenting any symptoms. But that's 14% of these sample size. That's quite a large percentage. And there's no particular reason to assume that these women would have the virus at a higher percentage than the general population of New York. So this looks like a lot of people are already infected with the virus and are carrying the virus. So that's the first point. The first point there is the prevalence of infected people is looking pretty high in New York. And we believe this is the same in other places as well. It's the same in my country. We know there's many more people actually infected than are officially diagnosed. So that's the first point. A lot more infections, it would appear, than we know about at the moment. And the other second point from this that's equally interesting and, and, and quite profound in many ways, really, 29 of the 33 patients who were positive at admission, 29 had no symptoms. So remember, there was four had symptoms on admission, but that means that of the, the four were positive, of course, so they had symptoms. But there were 29 people, 29 women, who were positive but had no symptoms. So this means that 87.9% were asymptomatic. They had the infection, but were not showing symptoms. A surprisingly high percentage. So what are the implications of this? Many more infected people than, th than thought. That's, that's quite possible. Um, many of those infected have no symptoms. Another interesting point. Now, to be fair, the proportion of asymptomatic young women might be higher than the proportion of asymptomatic older men, for example. But it's also indicating that a lot of people had asymptomatic disease. They were not showing symptoms. So maybe that's higher in young women, but it does have implications, I believe, for the whole population. And the other thing this means is if the infectivity rate in the population is higher, then the case fatality rate will be much lower. Now, let me show you what I mean by this. Now, these are numbers that I've taken today, Friday the 17th of April from New York City, with a population of 8.4 million people. Now, let's suppose that 10% of the population of New York is infected with this virus. Now, the death rate today attributable to COVID-19 in New York is appallingly high. It's 11,400 and 77 and this comprises of people that have been tested and people that have been diagnosed as having COVID-19 but have died so an awful number of deaths there but let's suppose that 10% of the population of New York is actually infected and that's quite possible because the number of asymptomatic young women at 13.7% could be higher but it's still quite feasible. This indicates there's a lot more infection out there than we'd thought. So 11,477 deaths, but 840,000 people infected, 10% of the population of New York City. That would give us a case fatality rate of 1.36%. 1.36%, which is roughly what we've been seeing in other places and roughly what we expect in other places. Now that number I've written there, that's the number of people formally diagnosed in New York with a test. But uh, this is the number that's currently accepted because of the clinical diagnosis that's now being accepted. So that will give us about 1.36% case fatality rate, which to be quite honest, wouldn't be too surprising. So at the end of this outbreak at the end of this pandemic when we look back when we've got all the data we'll probably see that the case fatality rate could be around about that still hoping it's going to be lower so that could well be the actual situation 
But if we look at the actual official figures at the moment, so 11,477 people who've probably died from COVID-19 in New York, but the official diagnosed number is 117,565. A much lower number than the potentially infected number of 840,000, 10% of the population of New York. Because as it is now, it's giving the appearance of a 9.7% death rate, which would be horrendous. And we really don't think it's that high. So it does look like there's an awful lot of uh, undiagnosed infection out there and that quite a few of the people that are infected are asymptomatic, which is good because that will give us an overall lower case fatality rate. And there's also implications uh, for the hospital itself in this, if we could have more universal testing. So for the hospital, it meant that they could uh, isolate uh, infected patients uh, and assign beds accordingly. It would also inform their neonatal care. So infected mothers could be advised on reducing the likelihood of infecting their children. And also it guides the use of uh, personal protective equipment, more guided use of personal protective equipment. So interesting study. And the takeaway messages are many more people are infected than we think. Many people that are infected have a very mild illness. We knew that already, but it seems a lot could have a completely asymptomatic infective episode. Good for them because they're, they're going to be developing immunity to this virus without having symptoms. But bad potentially for the people around them because they could be spreading the virus during I was going to say for the few days before they develop symptoms, but of course they don't develop symptoms. So they could be spreading the virus for quite a lot of days, not realising that they have it. Going some way to explaining the rapid rate of transmission and, and the scale of the epidemic that's been seen in New York. But that's an example from New York. But as I say, I do believe that applies to many other places where the actual prevalence of infection is much higher than those officially diagnosed and therefore we also believe that there are more asymptomatic people with the infection than had previously been thought.